Hey guys, it is Kuda Craster and I'm back with a demo on how to use this handheld sewing machine in your paper craft projects, uh, where to get it, how much does it cost, and so forth. So let's get this started. I bought this, in the like I mentioned in the previous haul, from the Wish app, and I bought it for $1.90. And like I said, I never heard of a manual... A handheld uh, sewing machine. I've heard of the electric one where you can buy from Michaels for $19.99 or you can buy it cheaper on Amazon for $13.99. So, but if you really don't want to get an electric, you want to try something manually, um, I think this is a really good uh, way, or actually, I would have to say this would probably be a really good way to start sewing if you want to get into sewing like using you, you know gradually just get yourself to a bigger machine so because that's what i'm doing right now with this is i i just want to slowly start getting into sewing because when it comes to the actual machine the big machine is just too intimidating for me so anyways um when you go on the wish app now you can buy this on amazon but it's going to be a little bit more expensive like maybe six to nine dollars maybe and um anyway so i bought this i placed my order february 19 and i just received it yesterday so it did take about two and a half weeks to receive this because like i said in the previous video most of these products that are being sold on the wish app is coming from overseas from china so it will take about two two weeks to a month to receive your items and I actually have a second order that I place at the same time as this, but it's not anything that has to do with paper crafting. And I still haven't received it yet. Hopefully I will receive it today. But um, hopefully, maybe, if not today, then sometime next week. But anyways, um, and towards the end of this video, I will be posting a code that you can use for your first purchase on the Wish app. 50% uh, off your first purchase. So uh, stay tuned for that later on. So anyways... Um, so in the box, it shows you, um, what you can do with this little machine. So this is pretty much, you know, fixing hems, you know, quick repairs and so forth. And there are English directions if you're worried about that. Um, so there are English, English directions, which are, uh, they're a little bit okay. Uh, it's understandable to a point. Um, but they do show you these little uh, pictures or diagrams on what's what. It's kind of sometimes it's kind of hard to see what they're actually pointing because the drawing is a little bit. It's not too detailed and it's a little bit small and the the where it's pointing at is kind of sometimes confusing. So if I I would recommend you guys watching um, the YouTube videos of how people will uh, use this or how you put the thread in and so forth. Which, anyways, I'm gonna do that here in this video, so it <laughs> doesn't really matter. Um, so what you get in the box besides this actual uh, spring come handheld sewing machine is this little free spool. So I got a gray one. I think the colors are very random. So I have a gray one and it comes with a small spool and with a small peg that will accommodate the uh, spool and then there's a little hole here that you put the peg in so it holds the spool and then you also get a longer peg and now I don't know where it is oh so the longer peg now it didn't not <laughs> this is my one of my threads or one of my mother's threads but um it comes with a longer uh, peg that you can put on a longer spool, but the spool that I have is a little bit long because the end of the peg is a little short. So it has a hard time holding on. I mean, I did use it, but see, it's because I, I really don't want to force this. So I might have to put this thread on a smaller spool later on in the future but yeah definitely get a spool that's a little bit shorter I don't know what the length is of this one 
it's probably about one and a half inches maybe but uh yeah i but i don't really plan to use a longer uh, peg i'll probably just stick with the smaller ones because they're just easy to uh, manage and then besides those pegs and the little small spool you get this little I know this has a name but I don't know what the name is this will actually help you uh, put this in the needle here you put it in the hole and then you put the thread in this hole and then you pull the thread through the needle so you don't have to like you know have a difficult time uh, doing that so anyway so I'm gonna start showing you how to put this together where to put the thread and so forth so you put the small peg into your small spool and then this is going to be this is a because on the box it says this is a so there's a little hole here and you're gonna put that thread through that little hole okay and then this is going to be B here, this little spring here that you put, there's like these little plates that you, you put the string in between. And then I'm not, this is the part where I'm not really sure if you turn it or if you just put it, you know, under or over and then continue on. But I'm just going to turn it around once and that's it. And then this is the part that I missed. I mean, when I used it, it was working uh, perfectly. But there's this, I don't know if you can see that there, but there's this little hook that you're supposed to put the string as well. So there's three places, or technically four, that you put the string through. So you put the string in that little hook, if I can do, <laughs> if I can do that, guys. Hold on, I'll be back. Okay, so I put the string through that little hook. I don't know if you can see that. And then this is where you're going to use your little thread puller to pull the rest of the string or thread. I shouldn't say string, but thread, excuse me. Okay, so you pull, make sure you pull the string a little bit to make it a little bit long, a little bit manageable. So... Okay, this is where I'm going to use my tool, put it through the hole of the needle, and also you can change the needle because there's this little screw here that you can unscrew and then take this needle out and put a different one if you don't want a needle that's thicker, you want it a little bit skinnier, or who knows what. Because like I said, I'm just a beginner, I'm, I'm not, I don't really know the proper terminology when it comes to sewing. But I'm sure those of you who do know, please let me, please let the other people know in the comments below um, where you can get these other types of needles and so forth. Anyways, so I got it through the needle here and make sure you keep this a little bit long. So now I'm going to show you what I used this little machine on so far. And of course the first thing I had to try was the fabric. So I found a scrap of fabric and I picked out a black one so it's easy to see the thread. So I'll show you my first one. So here the first time I tried it, it's pretty good. And it's pretty strong as well as you know, traditionally. And um, I also tried the longer spool and it did skip a little bit. I don't know if that was my fault because I think there's a, I don't know if, if you're supposed to go all the way in or halfway in when you're pressing it and so forth. But I'll, like I said, I'll just, when I demo it, that's when I'll ex explain further. So I did it all over this fabric so you can try it on fabric and then I tried it on a very thin paper with a sticker embellishment and it's okay but I don't like how big the holes are so you see like to me that takes all the attention compared to the thread or the accent and that just bugs me and this is very very thin paper so it's not a traditional 
uh, scrapbook paper because usually scrapbook papers like the 12 by 12 6 by 6 and so forth are a little bit thicker so I did use a project life card as well with a Maggie Holmes embellishment that I don't mind <laughs> um, if it gets messed up I don't mind if you know whatever and I accidentally pulled this string here and it, it came undone a little bit so I have to do that over but this top part here is perfect and, um, and so you don't have to use adhesive if you want to use a uh, embellishment and you can just put a piece of washi tape on and then start sewing so this is the back part if you're curious how it looks on the back so it's not very pretty but I like these little sewing accents so that's just it's perfect for scrapbooking so anyways so the demo part okay so I pretty much showed you the spool where to put it through and so forth so there's four places that the thread goes through okay so now I'm gonna do it on this fabric okay so what you do is this little plate here you lift up and you can lift it as far as you can now when it comes to the thickness um, I'm not sure if it says what how thick it can go through all I can say is I wouldn't recommend using anything too thick yeah it doesn't really say what type of fabric so yeah I I would just be cautious on um, how thick you put your like how many pieces of paper you're putting and um, I think I would recommend just doing two at first and then gradually just add another and another if you have more than um, one embellishment that you want to add on a particular paper or project life card and so forth when it comes to fabric um, I say the thickest I would I would recommend you try is probably canvas maybe and um, you know just or just start with a traditional fabric and then get to a thicker one gradually and see how that works but anyway so you lift this plate and then you put it on top and then when you when you placing your hand I don't if you're right-handed you put your thumb here on top and then your three fingers on the bottom and then this pointy finger here is going to be like here at the bottom tip I mean it, it just it's not I mean I definitely know your thumb has to be here but when it comes to placement on the bottom it, it really depends on how you want to do it but this is just how I grip it so anyway so you hold the string and make sure you hold the string and the fabric on the bottom and then you hold the fabric on the top okay because you want to try and make this as straight as possible because this does <laughs> as you can see here on the example it's not perfectly straight it just goes all the you know you know what I mean guys okay okay so let me see if I can okay so you press it and you'll hear it click and then it'll move and then you press it again and it'll move again so that's pretty much all you do and it's pretty easy and then the, this thread that you're holding will start um, going in so you just take the string out from underneath and then just keep going And as you can see here, the stitch is looking really nice. But see here, I don't know if it's me, I don't know if it's the machine, but you can see that it skipped. It's a very long skip. And um, let me see if I can do it again. Okay, so now it's working perfectly again. So I'm, I'm just not sure what was the problem. 
but I like it. It's fun. And it's a nice accent to use in paper crafting. So I will do an example of that as well. So hold on, let me get my scissors. Okay, so when you're done with your fabric or paper or whatnot, you cut the string on the bottom here. Okay, you lift up the plate. And that's pretty much the stitching there. And it came on, see that's the thing, like I'm, I'm not very good at this beginning part. I'm not sure where to place it and so forth so it doesn't come undone. I think you're supposed to thread it down and then put it in one of the loops. I'm not sure, but that's something I still need to uh, practice on and work on and so forth. So this part is pretty good here. So that's pretty nice. So now I'm gonna start doing the paper one and I'm just gonna use this one since I have to fix, <laughs> I have to fix this one again. So it's the same process. But remember also that you only have so much room. So if you really want to like stitch all the way, that's how, that's how far you can go. So make sure when you're going to stitch something, you try to make it close as possible. Don't make it too long, just make it a little bit short to work with. Okay, so I'm just gonna go back. So make sure you pull the string again because you want this end part to be long so you can hold on to it and make sure you also have a little bit room to place your finger to hold the string and um, you know pull whatever your material is at the same time while you're pushing so do the same process again And just cut when you're done on the bottom and lift the plate up and yeah um, like I said mine's not perfect I'm still it's something that I, I need to practice with a lot but it like I said this part here is pretty perfect I love it so you can definitely use this in paper crafting if you want and um, add some accents on your embellishments, your paper embellishments and so forth. If you really don't wanna deal with this manually, you can get the electric and try it out. That's why later on I will buy the electric one to see how that does in paper crafting. Or you can just go with the traditional. There's nothing wrong with that. Just take some classes on how to use the traditional uh, sewing machine and use it. Or buy the We Are Memory Keepers, which is specifically used for paper crafting. So anyways, um, that's pretty much it for this demo. I hope you guys uh, understood and saw everything uh, that you needed to see on how this works and so forth. And like I said, I bought this on the Wish app. I will put somewhere on the screen a code that you can use on your first purchase 50% off. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.